the image of my grandfather appearing on our doorstep in the year 1995 is the memory I often recall. It was the final moment of the arduous journey he had to take as being forced to leave his home during the brutal warfare in the former Yugoslav countries. Before that moment, my grandfather's life was similar to the lives of many people around the world. He fought as a young boy in the Second World War against the fascists. When the war ended, he built a large new home together with my grandmother in his birthplace in the Dalmatian hinterland of Croatia. He was active and respected member of the community, helping as a teacher to fight the illiteracy in the young, newly established country. Afterwards, he ran the local inn for several years and then the local store until he got retired. His home was the first one to have a radio and the first one with a television in the whole village. Every evening, there were dozens of heads peeking out of the window frame into the flickering screen. People were telling that if you want to see heaven, you should go to see the garden of my grandfather's family. The years have passed and his five children were sent to study in the remote big cities. Then the grandchildren came and the grandfather lived a peaceful, good life in his home until the war broke out. Yugoslav wars were bloody. Their active participants on all sides deeply relied on the media propaganda and on the confusion and aggression they induced. So in the year 1995, my grandfather, as thousands of other civilians, was caught unprepared in the middle of a war operation. In fear of losing their lives, the civilians were forced to leave their homes within only a couple of hours. Most of them did not know that they are seeing their home for the very last time. In the complete chaos caused by this situation, highways turned into refugee routes, overcrowded with thousands of tired, hopeless human beings carrying their humble belongings. With eight-year-old boys driving cars and tractors with the trolleys full of people, while others went on foot for hours, for days, for weeks, with no particular point of arrival, only to stay alive. Some new humans were born on this journey, while the others passed away and were simply buried by the road. Those who didn't want to leave their homes and decided to stay mostly the old ones and the mentally ill. And all of those who simply thought that they have done nothing for what they should be called to account were brutally murdered. The animals captured in the stables were dying in agony while the lucky ones were collected by the looters some days later. In the final act, most of the houses were burned to the ground among them was the old home of my grandparents. After about a week while we were at home, the grandfather finally showed up. He was in his Sunday's best wearing a white shirt with a tie and an elegant gray suit. Out of his prompt pocket, two things were jutting, a toothbrush and a simple plastic razor. In his right hand, he was holding a cotton bag with food and some money in it. That was all what he took from that already non-existing place, which was a home to his family for decades 
now on the front line of a brutal war. I asked myself all these years, why did he show up only with those three things and in a suit, although knowing on which kind of arduous journey he is about to leave? I wondered, why did he wear a suit when there was nothing to celebrate, especially not in the moment in which he was forced to leave his home for good? It took me some time to understand. It was a special, symbolic moment in which the whole life of my grandfather was changing forever and he recognized that that moment has come. And then I thought of the toothbrush and the razor jutting out of the pocket of his jacket. I was wondering, what should you take with you when you are forced by the war to leave your home? If you cannot take everything, then take simply nothing, my grandfather would say, if he would still be alive. Take only the things that help you maintain your hygiene. Because the most important thing that you want to keep when forced to leave your home, when forced to leave your entire past life, is your human dignity.